All right, guys. Uh, today's video is going to be taking place on my messy workbench here. And yes, I realize there's a tripod right here, but I'm still wearing the chest strap. That way, you can actually see what I'm really doing, and I can have the camera pointed here at all times, and you can see both my hands. Uh, what I'm doing today is uh, the other day I was out fishing, like I always do, and I set this rod down for a minute. I leaned it up against a, a wall, and it fell over. The wind blew it, knocked it over, and it fell and hit the reel on the concrete. I'm not sure if you can see it there, but there is a rough spot now on my reel. And when that happens, every time you cast out, it starts snagging the line. It was really cutting my cast short, and then uh, I didn't really have the issue of it uh, fraying my line, but that's a big concern there, is it'll start to fray your line and you'll start to snap off. Uh, so I'm going to smooth that out. I've got one of these like spongy brick sandpaper things, and I'm just going to do this, sponge, smooth it out. And since this thing is spongy, it'll curve to the shape of the reel. And as you can see, some of the gold is coming off and it's turning silver. Well. Not that you can actually see it because it's uh, really fine work here. And uh, with what I, the way I'm doing it, I don't even have to unspool the line. I can leave the line on there uh, and just smooth this piece out, this little rough patch out. Already a major improvement. both sides of it just to be sure and since this thing is spongy it'll it takes the shape of whatever I'm sanding so it smooths it out better see there so it's it's compressing around the edges of the the end of the spool and it's smoothing it out all the way around and I'm not actually even touching the line so that's always a major bonus and that is actually good enough to go I can go fishing now let me check there feels like there's another slight rough patch over here not quite as bad but uh, it's worth hitting a little bit here oh, yeah. major improvement and you can do it with regular sandpaper or something too a finer grade finer grit sandpaper of course uh, this one's probably uh, 200 grit maybe somewhere between 100 and 200 grit uh, you probably actually want something a little finer than what I'm using but I'm actually just gonna go and get the whole edge of the reed spool right there from the top because it feels rough it's rough all, all the way across the top and none of that's actually gonna affect the line but I'm just gonna smooth it out to the touch And now the, the reel did lose its coloring. It's not gold around the edge of the spool anymore. It's now chrome colored, but that's all right. Uh, this is my favorite reel, so instead of just tossing it in the trash like a lot of people will do, I'm gonna do what I can to re repair it. And there we go, it's done. Okay, well, I just shot that video, little instructional thing. I, that was gonna be the whole video. I shot it, and then after I finished recording it, I thought, you know, why not just go out real quick and show people that it actually casts now. I mean, I didn't get any footage of it being uh, cut short like it had been. I'd been throwing out and it was like the line was getting snagged on that rough spot and the bait would just stop dead in the air and drop. So I'm going to go out now and test it and see if I can cast it better now. Uh, so that means it's time for another episode of Rush Hour Creek Fishing. Uh, there's a spot that I've always seen this spot, but I've never fished it, mostly because there's nowhere in the area to park. The closest parking is a long walk away from that, unless you want to park in the middle of this shady street that I don't want to park on. I don't trust tr uh, parking on streets like that, especially the, the streets in this area. So I need to go find somewhere to park and then walk a long way to get to this spot. I've never actually fished it, so I'm going to go out there and try to fish it before the sun goes down. It is. 4.15 right now. Uh, the reason I call these videos Rush Hour, or well, I'm starting a new series calling them Rush Hour Creek Fishing or Rush Hour Fishing, 
because from four to six is rush hour when everybody's getting off work and trying to get home there's traffic everywhere so I got to get to these spots and catch a fish before six o'clock that's what I'm doing that's the challenge hopefully I can catch more than one because I do know there I know for sure there are fish in this spot I've seen the fish from these bridges uh, I think it's mostly dinks but I still want to go and catch a couple of fish so I'm gonna look on Google Maps right now try to find somewhere to park as close to that place as I can and get down there and bring in some fish all right I've got roughly an hour and a half till it gets dark and to be honest I don't really want to be walking back across all this terrain in the dark but this spot here does look pretty good it's pretty wide and it's got it's deep enough to actually hold some fish but with the weather we've had lately it's been pretty consistently warm the last couple of days but the weather we had before that was kind of cold so I think they're gonna be looking for deeper holes okay there's the good first good sign I've seen there's a lot of bait fish minnows and stuff hanging out right here so I'll keep walking down try to find something that would eat those a lot of them all right here also a little bit of a weather update it's supposed to storm later on today tonight so that's why I'm trying to get out right now I don't know when the next chance I'm gonna have is gonna be so but it looks like the creek is getting a little bit more fishable up this direction who knows actually look there's a bass right there a couple of bass there's a school of bass and decent sunfish right there they're all a little tiny bass but Okay, they're hiding in this ugly algae over here. I think I spooked them when I walked up, so they're not interested in biting right now. There's a first predatory fish I've seen was some tiny bass and some sunfish, all about the same size. Uh, they're not even really big enough. They're not worth even throwing some casts at, really. So I'm just gonna move on look see if I see anything bigger maybe this wasn't a good idea going to that park and moving south because it's just been nothing but shallow I'm a little concerned that I'm gonna run out of daylight before I even get to a spot close enough or deep enough to fish and of course the spots that are wide enough and deep enough to hold fish are just caked up with algae but look there's cables right here with buoys like these are like the kind of markers you see on like the lakes and creeks when you're not supposed to kayak past a certain spot. And then there's some pipes running down over here to a floating bridge thing. I don't know what the hell this is. And actually now that I'm looking at them close, they don't look like they're pipes or anything. It looks like some kind of floating system not pipes they're connected to hinges like almost like what a train would have and then you get this thing here oh that's interesting that's pretty cool it says what it is right there band along litter trap cleaning our waterways stormwatersystems.com so it's a stormwater litter trap it catches all the trash that floats down past it and there's a whole bunch of trash right here around it so looks like it's actually working even though the even though the whole creek is trashed anyway Whew. not sure if you can hear me over all this wind but I have walked so far and burned up so much time that there's no way I'm gonna be able to make this trip back to my truck before it gets dark it's gonna be real dark I'm not gonna see where, where I'm going so I had to call and arrange for somebody to come pick me up and give me a ride back to my truck so let's see if I can find a fish between now and then seriously I've been walking for almost an hour actually this looks like a really good hole but I'm not sure if there's any fish in it there should be fish in this I can't believe there's not I'm not seeing any oh there was something I just spooked probably a turtle oh there's a fish okay I threw it out there and the fish came out of the hiding to come check out my bait so let me clean off my hooks from the algae and we'll try that again and there's a big carp right there a couple of carp that's good some carp if there's carp there might be something else although it's a bad spot to cast 
I mean, it'd be kind of nice to pull one out right here underneath the train. Trains are always good luck for me. That's the key to urban fishing in San Antonio is there's got to be a train. Okay, there's a little bit of a clearing up here. I might be able to get some casts out. Maybe there's a fish in the area that's hungry. It's actually nice and deep right here, but everywhere else around there's not trains really are good luck though let's see if I can catch one with this train there oh oh my god oh my god it pulled all pulled my bait off the hook there's there's a bass right there too, another small one. There are fish right here. But I lost my bait and pulled it off the hook. And he swirled on it too, it was a decent one. That's what I was, I was just saying that about trains. Okay, so there's two, two small ones about like that, about six to eight inches, swimming around here in front of me. And then over there, there's something probably closer to a pound that just ate a uh, Senko. So I would like to be able to maybe catch him and get get my other Senko back so let me cast out there again oh yeah he's oh my god are you kidding me he swirled on it again and I missed him and the train has ended so maybe the the luck from the train will still linger around for a little while across those rocks. Maybe there's something hiding down in those rocks. I know there is. Oh, there we go. Got him that time. Got him. You ain't getting off. It's a little one, but I got him. He went after it hard, and he got very lucky. Barely missed that gill plate. He got lucky little bitty spotted bass actually not actually a largemouth spotted bass 